Word Fiesta 2020 is an Afrikaans festival embracing all who speak it. Debates, other author discussions, uh, theater movies uh, get key focus at that particular festival. Now, this year's edition in Stellenbosch is arguably the most diverse yet, with the theme Keep On Keeping On in both English and in Afrikaans. Uh, that reflects a festival which has come a long way since its inception 21 years ago. Marcel Gordon will be speaking to a variety of people who are part of this year's festival live from Stellenbosch. She joins us now. Uh, Marcel, is everything on track for, a, uh, for the festival today? Indeed. Good morning, uh, Tony. Uh, I'm coming to you from the streets of Stellenbosch, the tree-lined streets of Stellenbosch that we often hear so much about. But just like um, the uh, city or town of Stellenbosch is not just about these hallowed walls of academia, the Stellenbosch University and the tree-lined streets amongst which we're standing right now. Uh, Stellenbosch itself tells a story of a town where there's still a big gap between the haves and the have-nots. It's not just about the very rich that are able to make their home here. It's about the communities that make up the peripherals of this town as well. And that is very much reflected in uh, this year's uh, edition of of Wordfierce. It started officially last weekend already. The town has been hustling and bustling as we've had some uh, around a thousand uh, uh, different pieces of performance art, theater, movie, and even drag shows that have been underway every day. But really coming to a point uh, uh, this weekend as it, it comes to an end. Now, obviously, I speak about the hustle and bustle. You can't see that right now. It's still very, very early days. We uh, early uh, um, hours. Um, the creatives uh, amongst us probably wouldn't be up so early in the morning depending on what time their first performances are but we'll be speaking to some of them uh, over the next uh, couple of hours or so as we bring you the sights and sounds of uh, uh, this uh, event. But a, a golden thread throughout this year, the 21st edition of Wurstfies, very much about diversity and whether this language, some would say a controversial South African language, uh, which has uh, 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 been a, a part of South Africa's history, uh, a very important part uh, some would say, whether it is finally embracing all that speak it. Uh, some statistics will tell you just over 50% of Afrikaans speakers in South Africa are black. But are organizations and institutions who some call the uh, gatekeepers of the language embracing that and reflecting on who that Afrikaans speaking market really is? Now, looking at the lineup of Woodfears this year, you'd say they'd come a long way to finally doing that. Um, and some are saying Afrikaans should be made more inclusive on all platforms. And we spoke, uh, myself and uh, our colleague, uh, Monique Mortlock, spoke to some students and academic who've uh, been grappling with this very issue uh, here in Stellenbosch, especially during Wurtwies, where we've heard from academics, authors, theater practitioners, writers, playwrights, and opinion makers. Um, and uh, that is where this uh, point of discussion has been front and center for the last week or so of the festival. Let's hear from Monique Mortlock as she tells us more. This year's theme for Wordfierce is keep moving and make noise. Much of the noise over the past few years has been around Stellenbosch University's lack of transformation. It led to the institution making English the main medium of instruction. Nearly four years down the line and students have mixed feelings about Afrikaans. I don't think it's seen as a whites-only language, but I do think in the media it is predominantly, as of history and maybe even still today, it is predominantly white Afrikaans. Since I've moved to the Western Cape, obviously, I've been exposed to that. Obviously, there's other, other races that also speak Afrikaans, but I still feel that it is still more predominantly white. I think a lot of people forget that it's a language spoken by colored people as well, um, but definitely in the media it's only being shown as a very white and oppressive language. The media and institutions like Wurtfies have a big role to play in showcasing the diversity of Afrikaans. But are they doing enough? I think that it's changing quite slowly. Uh, with it. I would obviously prefer that if, you know those kind of that kind of change can be less incremental. It can happen quicker. Others, like author Olivia Kutsia, say Afrikaans spaces are still closed off to larger audiences. 
so exclusive um, that it net we see not most what we say in the word, you know, what the deal is from the word. Die, die feest. And maybe we must have to be able to be more clear and bring more diverse with within these spaces of Afrikaans. Kutsia believes the introduction of a greater range of voices means lesser known languages like Kaps will flourish. Monique Motlak, Stellenbosch. Now, through the magic of television, Monique Mortlock, uh, not only putting that story together and canvassing the opinion of people here in Stellenbosch, she joins us uh, here in Stellenbosch as well to discuss more uh, on that subject matter and her own experiences out as well. Monique, thank you so much for joining us so bright and early uh, uh, this morning. Um, that was a very interesting story that you were able to put together. And, and it's not a story that hasn't been done before. Uh, but what I've noticed in the 20 or so years that you hear this kind of a topic being spoken about there has been a bit of an evolution in how especially young people who spend a few years of their life uh, if they're lucky enough to be able to study here uh, about how the language of Afrikaans is perceived and whether it is still seen as uh, an oppressive tool uh, of an institution that has uh, a very very dark parts of its history as well as part of uh, uh, South Africa as well what was the sense that you got from uh, speaking to academics as well as um, opinion makers and students about how they feel about where brand Afrikaans is at this point in time let me first tell you what some of the students told me I only showed you a glimpse of the uh, conversations that I had with students, they mentioned that, um, or a couple of them, especially the students of color, uh, those, those students told me that I don't see Afrikaans as being um, a, a language for white people because it's my language, it's the language I speak at home. Um, so while they were saying that, other students again were saying actually I still see Afrikaans as being a language predominantly spoken by white people because that's what we see in the media. And that was the, you mentioned earlier that golden thread, that was the golden thread in these conversations that I had with students. It all ended up pointing to what we see in the media, mm. what mainstream media is showing us, the faces that you see in popular shows like one student um, who was in the package, Mondli, he mentioned Siewendelan. I used to only see white faces in Siewendelan and even though I saw um, other ethnic groups speaking Afrikaans, for me it was a it was a Yilda and Obas language. And, um, That's fascinating. Yeah. Mm. And for academics again, they said um, th they, they didn't largely point the blame at the media um, because they said you you can't speak about Afrikaans without taking into account the history and that history of um, it it was the language used by the oppressors mm. um, we we saw the um, what happened in 1976 with the Soweto uprisings mm. we saw that fight from um, anti-apartheid activists to have the freedom to speak their languages, to be taught in their languages, mm -hmm. and that revolt against Afrikaans we saw again during the Fees Must Fall movements when and, and right here, this yeah, at Salimbosh, where, where, well. where other students were campaigning for fees to fall, yeah, at Salimbosh, it was such a deeply personal um, fight by students to not only call for fees to fall, but to also call for total transformation, mm -hmm. because I was Covering fees must fall back then, and I was fresh out of this university, this and I completely understood what students were calling for, what they were speaking about when they were speaking about how certain spaces felt exclusive. Certain spaces here, yeah, whether it be at some of the residences, at some of the um, private uh, digs, is what we called called it. Um, they said it felt to Afrikaans and they didn't feel part of that, especially the black students, especially um, students who identify as colored um, or brown. And, and I felt that too when and, I was and here. And you speak Afrikaans yes. as well and yet you still felt uh, excluded from certain spaces and the language being part of those tools to keep you out? Yes. Um, there were times when uh, you, you, there was a difference in the way I spoke to my white friends um, in, Afrikaans. The, in Afrikaans and the way I spoke to my black friends. Um, I made sure that my Savored. Afrikaans was savoured or yes. standard Afrikaans and that it was um, 
and Afrikaans that's acceptable to their mm. ears, even though I know this isn't how I speak. Ik praat so. Now, just I, bef- I speak plat. <laughs> now, just before we wrap, because we have run out of time, do you feel that as somebody who speaks so-called standard Afrikaans as well as uh, Cops. dialect, Cops, mm. uh, as some are calling it uh, now as well, do you feel that that dialect is more accepted in spaces where it hasn't been before and on media platforms that, that have the power to really reflect that to society? I think a lot is being done to um, change. And as we heard from Andre Trantal, uh, those changes are happening incrementally. It's mm. small steps. It's not happening fast enough. But I big up to um, institutions like Voortvies for taking those big leaps in introducing a variety of voices. Like later on, you're going to be speaking to um, members of a drag show, for mm-hmm. example. This is something we wouldn't have seen 10 years ago at a, Woord- ago at a Voortvies program. So those changes are happening. But a bit too slowly for my liking. Okay, Monique Mortlock there, uh, a reporter from ENCA, giving us uh, uh, both an idea of what uh, people are talking about here at Voice Fierce, about brand Afrikaans, and and for me, more importantly, own personal experience with the language that she uh, uh, finds her home in, she finds her soul in, and in which she speaks to her family and friends with, uh, and her experiences as a student here at uh, Stellenbosch University that, of course, is host for Voort Fears. Um, uh, Tony, with that, back to you. We'll be bringing you more from Voort Fears 2020 uh, in just over half an hour's time. All right, fantastic stuff. Thank you so much, Marcel. Gordon's a little bit dark. They're waiting for the sun to rise in Stellenbosch. We'll catch up with that a little bit later on.